What's going on guys? I know what you're thinking. What the hell is this? This isn't Lord of the Rings adventure card game content. Well, yeah. Uh, if you've been paying attention to my intros to these videos, you might know that I've been kind of keen on covering some uh, other digital card and board games with this channel. And I recently just got access to a closed beta of a new CCG that will be coming out soon called Causa Voices of the Dusk, um, and I figured why not make a video showcasing it. Uh, it is a game by a small indie developer called Niebla. I believe it's comprised of seven or eight individuals and all based in Chile. And this happens to be their very first game. Uh, it is a free to play collectible card game where players are transported to the world of Astaria where there are four powers uh, that control the world, I guess. Uh, glory, wealth, influence, and spirit. And these powers give rise to various factions all vying for control of the world. Now, as a player, you will take control of various faction leaders, struggling to make that faction's ideals prevail in a uh, vast and exotic fantasy world. Uh, now in this video, I'm going to take a look at what the closed beta has to offer. I'm going to showcase some um, playthrough footage of the game and even maybe get some deck building done. Uh, and at the very end of the video, I'm going to offer some of my own impressions on the game in its current state, where the game succeeds and perhaps where the game needs some work. Now, if you see anything that you like in this video or that you like about Quasar Voices of the Dusk, Stay tuned to the end because I'll show you how you can get access to the beta yourself if you want to. Uh, now, let's get into it. When you start up the game, uh, you will be thrown into a tutorial that lasts about 10 minutes or so. And it teaches you the basics of um, the gameplay over 5 short missions. Now, I won't be covering the tutorial here, but... Once you do complete it, you will get access to the game's menu. And let's take a look at what we have here. Now, if we click on this button here, we get our uh, handy little welcome thing here with uh, a bunch of update information and uh, uh, how to join the Discord as well. I'll leave a, a, um, a note in the description below if you want to join the Discord and join in the friendly discussions on this game where you can talk to other players as well as the developers themselves. Now we also have missions here which I guess is the dailies section so uh, it looks like uh, as far as economy goes when the game comes out there's going to be gold and there's going to be gems. Now I have no idea what this all means. Uh, I, I believe with the um, beta we get access to two copies of every card so we don't need to worry about that. As you can see here, there's actually no uh, packs to open. That's because it's the closed beta, so they don't really want to um, commit to any uh, economy level here. We also have a profile, which is where we can see our um, rankings in the season, uh, as well as total wins. We have power levels, so every time we win or lose, with, or I should say, every time we play with a deck or complete a match with one of these... Uh, power level decks. We will gain level and who knows what that means in the future. No idea. Uh, down here we have a collection. A lot of this is cosmetics. I'll show you in another menu here. But one thing that's interesting here is cards. So it's 271 out of 410. I don't know exactly what that means. Um, that could just be that there's more. I need more copies of certain cards. I don't know what the uh, place set in this game is. Um, but I tell you what, if this game releases with 410 cards uh, as its core set, that's incredible. Even just 271 in a core set, that's pretty damn uh, good for a uh, card game. So let's take a look in the collection menu. In here we have all the cards, so we can take a look at all the different uh, cards we have for all the different fact uh, powers. So we've got red is glory, uh, yellow is wealth, uh, Blue is, I believe, influence, and green is spirit. And then at the bottom here, we have the neutral colors, uh, neutral cards, I should say. And we also have a crafting system here, which I have no idea how it works. I'm not going to 
really mess around with this too much. Uh, we have our decks. We have the four themed decks, one for each of the uh, powers. You can see there, and we can also uh, make a new deck here. Over here we have leaders. I have no clue what it actually is. You can see that if we click on each one of these, there's some uh, law here, but it's all in Spanish. I don't know what that actually translates to be. But we've also got a bunch of unlockable ones as well. So it looks like there's going to be more coming in the future. And I assume that these are going to uh, inform in some way how we build a deck or give us um, bonus uh, actions or powers or something like that. We'll, we'll have to see what happens there. In here we have the cosmetics. So we have our card backs, just one for the moment. We have backgrounds. And these are actually really cool because they're not just static images. They're little videos that will play... Uh, so the little animated things and you'll see that in the actual gameplay what these are avatars just two for now one title and one banner I assume that's this whole thing here uh, it looks like it's the same thing uh, cool that's covered um, there's no market yet uh, we have settings obviously and there's uh, friends list now we're going to the play there we can see all the modes that are available right now so we have casual which is basically PvP. Um, there's no ranked, but um, I have had a chance to play in PvP with another real life person. I won't be doing that for this video for uh, one major reason. I live in the land of the tits up internet and time zones are a bit tricky. So there's probably not gonna be a lot of people playing, especially because it is a closed beta. Uh, so it can take some time to find a match. So instead we are gonna do a versus uh, AI match here and as you can see here we've got the scenes and our custom decks and we have uh, We can select our opponent. So these are all the other same decks uh, We can mirror our own deck which is handy if we want to use a, a custom deck or we can just click on random now over here We have custom matches you can set up with our friends and this is where this is where I'm really interested in. Uh, if you know anything about me, I'm a big fan of PvE content when it comes to card games. And seeing this lovely little world map is intriguing. Um, I'd really like to see what the developers can do with the story and the lore that they're um, potentially trying to tell. And if you click on here, this is where we can access the tutorial again if we want to replay that. But it zooms all the way in and you can see each episode has its own little pit. Which is really cool because if we click on that again we zoom out so that was just a small section down here and then we have this large section here so I did get a chance to ask the developers on the discord channel what their vision was in terms of the campaign or PVE uh, I wanted to know if it was gonna be something that they were gonna be focusing on or it was just gonna be an afterthought and I did get a response and even though it was sort of indicative of them sort of keeping things close to the chest right now because it's so early they did say that they did not want the lore and the story to be trivial so hopefully they can really expand on this aspect of the game i really enjoy being able to just chill out in a card game build a deck and and run it against uh, some ai okay now with that said let's get into our first game now the way i want to do this video uh, i'm going to play one match against the ai using a theme deck i think we'll go with wealth for this one and we'll do random uh once that match is done we'll go into the deck builder build a deck of our own and then take that against um another ai uh so with that said let's get into this so for this first match i do want to try and do my best to describe what this game is all about, how to play it, um, but just know I am not a tutorial. <laughs> uh, I'm going to butcher the uh, aspects of this game, so bear with me, but I'll, I'll do my best. So this is, if you played many card games before, this is very familiar. This is where you mulligan. You can sort of select which cards to keep and which cards to get rid of. I will keep all my cheap ones here. Uh, uh, do I really want this one? Hmm. Now nah, let's get rid of that one. We'll go ready. And that'll redraw some cards. Excellent, that seems better. Okay, we get the first turn. So, what is the objective of the game? Pretty simple. Reduce this number to zero. This number is the resistance or health, if you want to call it, of the opponent. And you've got to keep yours above zero, essentially. Um, the There are three types of cards in the game. We have... Uh, um, character cards which get played onto the board or what it's called in this game the um, the scene 
Now, interestingly enough, uh, with character cards, we can only play up to four, we can only have up to four um, characters on the board at any given time, which means that we have to, um, you know, be wary of what we're playing on the board, I guess. Uh, now, apart from characters, we also have uh, supports which get played onto the board and they usually end up down here or next to your avatar. And these are things that you can activate um, whenever you like, really. And then the third type of card is the event. And these essentially act as, well, I don't know, sorceries or instants where you drag it out, you play it, and the effect goes off, and the card is immediately discarded. Now, uh, how does resources work in this game? Well, uh, you'll notice that there are no resource cards. There is also no mana rock system like you would see in Hearthstone or Elder Scrolls Legends. But there is a resource in this game, as you'll note in the top left hand corner, um, the card has a cost, so this one costs 1, this costs 1, this costs 1, this costs 3, this costs 4. How do we afford to play that? Well, we have this thing called the core zone, and this is where the meat of the strategy in this game really happens. This number here denotes our cause level. The resource cost in the top left hand corner is also called the... Um, the cause levels, I think it's called the cause level. So we have to, in order to play this card, we have to match the cause level here. So how do we do that? Well, we drag one card from our hand into the cause zone, and that increases the number. We can do that once per turn, and now we can play something from our hand. So let's go ahead and play the street vendor, which has an initiative. Now initiative just means that when it enters the battlefield, the effect takes place, so we would draw a card here. Oh, well, that's actually really good. Um, okay, so... And you'll note, too, that each um, character card has a attack value in the bottom left-hand corner and a health or resistance value in the bottom right-hand corner. Now, the other thing here that's important to note is this number here, 2 out of 2, or for me, 1 out of 1. Both players can only play up to 2 cards on their turn. Um... So even though I have only one, I can still play one, sorry, cause zone level, I can still play more than just one card if I have, if they cost only one. So I'm going to play this guy, and that means that I have no more, I can no longer play any more cards from my hand. Now there are ways to manipulate this um, play amount, but uh, for now that's just two cards per player per turn, uh, and Vigilant here means that... Um, uh, characters have to attack him before they can attack anything else. So normally it's it's free, you can attack like us and you can attack uh, other characters or your opponent. So that does it for our turn, let's pass. He's going to draw a card and then he's going to play Amulet, which is what you get if you start second. So similar to like a Ring of Power or something like that. Or a coin from Hearthstone. He's also going to play the Support Traveler's Monolith. Uh, okay, so it's our turn again. So again, we want to play a card into the core zone to increase our level. So we'll chuck the highest cost card. Actually, no we won't. Here's another really cool thing. I can play cards into the core zone to increase the level from my hand. Or... I can play a card on the battlefield or a support on the battlefield as well. So if I attack with this guy, get the value from that attack, I can drag him down here and he he essentially lets me keep the cards in my hand um, as they are. So that's a really cool um, element of the cause zone here. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to play... I uh, don't really need that one yet. Let's play the Mutiny support card, and we'll also play the Highwayman. Hidden basically means that he cannot be targeted as long as he hasn't doesn't make an attack. So let's we can activate this, but there's no point in doing that right now. Let's pass the turn. Now, how does the card draw system work? Well, um. You always draw up to four cards at the start of your turn. So if you have one card in your hand at the start of your turn, you will draw three cards, so you go up to four. If you have more than four, you'll only draw one. Lucky killed a thing. Yep. So if you see there, I had two cards at the start of my turn. I drew two more to make up the four. 
Uh, what do we got here? Two cards from your deck. Minus two cards, that basically means I mill myself two cards. And then I deal four damage to a character. But I don't think I can target this guy. So let's just go ahead and chuck that into the cause zone. Which means that we can play this one. But we might hold on to that for now. Go ahead and attack. And we'll chuck out the uh, servant here. Oh, we've got another one. Yep, chuck that one out as well. And pass the turn. So again, if this guy wants to attack, he has to attack one of these two. And um, they do reciprocal damage, so both will die. Okay, plus two cards to your deck. So what does that mean? Well, it takes two cards from the discard pile and then shuffles them back into the deck. Alrighty, uh, to an allied unit, plus two, plus two, so I can use that to kill something. Deal two damage to all enemy units, that's not bad either. But, I want to show you something else, else that's really cool about the, um, the cause meter, the cause zone here. Um, just because I sacrifice a card from my hand or the board into this doesn't mean that that card is gone for the whole game. I can click on this and uh, I can choose to require a card. What that means is it's basically as long as I can pay the cost of the cause level and I have a play uh, to use it, I can play a card from my cause level like I would from my hand. So the cause zone actually acts as a second um, a second hand, which is really, really cool. I like, I like that. Uh, so now I've dealt with that thing. So now I'm going to send this guy. No, I'm going to make him attack first. And I'm going to send him into my cause zone to replay. So if you play a card from your cause zone, it does reduce the cause level. So that's just something to keep in mind. Uh, and I can also do... Let's just chuck this guy out. Again, I'm milling myself. Now, what happens when you go... Oh, just pass it in. What happens when you run out of cards in your hand? Well, you don't automatically lose, but it runs on a fatigue system. So, every card that I would draw from my deck, if I had zero cards in my deck, I would take five damage per card. So, it's really something you do not want to do. You don't want to run out of cards in your, in your deck. Yikes. So he's doing the same thing. He's milling himself a bit. So this is a mirror match, essentially. Okay. Got here. So is there anything that we can make use of in there? Nope. Where's my other card? Oh, there it is. So I can... Get a 5-5 five, five out as well. But I kind of want to deal with the one that's already on the board. I don't think I can, though. Does this do? Do one damage to your opponent for each enemy character. Yeah. Yeah, let's do that. He's got three out right now. So all opponent units. Go ahead and do that. Clear the board out a little bit. Uh, we'll have this guy run into that one. There's absolutely no way I can do it. No, I can't. Oh. Uh, I can kill it if I do this, but it would just kill itself as well. Is that worth it? Mm. Otherwise, I'm taking five damage. Um, yeah, I'm gonna play this. And I do that, I give that, and then I'm gonna attack. Try and uh, beat our opponent down a bit. I can still dedicate it, huh? Yeah, go ahead and do that one. Even though that is a good card because it allows me to. Um, add cards back from my discard pile into my deck again, so I can keep myself from milling out too much. It's like... Yeah, it looks like our opponent did the same thing by adding two more cards into his deck. Ow. Both trade. Hey, Two cards then destroy a character. That is risky. You can use it to destroy her. Or, actually, what's Furtive do? May attack any target ignoring vigilance okay 
Okay, all right, let's get our big beefy 5-5 um, five, five down. So let's go and chuck this into my core zone. And we will use that bonus cause and play this one for myself too, which does hurt. Oh, two cards to my deck, two cards to my deck, okay. I can only play one card from my cause zone per round. Hmm. Let's not play any other cards for now. Let's just pass the turn. Ooh. Okay. So he had another one of these um, in his cause zone. He's milling himself out a lot though, which is handy. Ow. Ow. Okay, so we need to find a way of dealing with everything. So if we play this, that will kill the Vigilant character, which will allow us to then attack this one. Now we really need to play the Traveler's Monolith and then activate it put another card into the deck okay let's, we're gonna take some damage here unfortunately but it's the only answer I can really see ow 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 ooh dear uh, two, plus two cards to my deck, that's good. Give me from milling out too much, but I still have to find a way of surviving. Uh, so if I go and look in here, I, I do have a Vigilant in there. So let's play that. And activate that. And he gets the actual card as well. I don't think that really helps. I think we lose this, unfortunately. Attack there, there, and then something just kills. Well, this just attacks me. Yeah. yeah. He milled himself, but it won't matter because he's not going to draw any other cards until his next turn. So, unfortunately, we only had to survive one more turn, but didn't quite make it. But that's good. Like, it shows that the AI can actually do some some damage in this game. They're not completely useless. Um, either that or I just really suck. Alright, let's let's uh, let's make a deck, shall we? And we'll get into a second match straight away. Uh, I had an idea for a deck when I was looking through some of these cards. Um, go here. I want to make a glory deck. Uh, now, I don't know what all this means. So, this could be a leveling system. When we get to level 28, we get to choose one of these. But I don't know. No idea yet. Save. Okay. So, new... No, 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 no. Yes. Thank you. Pump that one. Uh, edit. Okay. Here we are. So, my idea for a deck was to sort of make a... Not aggressive one, but a sort of a deck that utilizes um, vigilant characters and then pumps up their health to make walls essentially. And I figured, yeah, uh, I really like this guy. So let's chuck two of him in there. This one's good because it gives us more health to a target, so we can make a uh, blocker stronger. Grab Talarian Squire. Grab a Fruit Gatherer. Invoke means that they basically uh, spawn that card, the supplies card. Uh, actually, what's that one? Three to your resistance. Okay, no, not interested in that one. Let's grab Lashing. Uh, let's grab a copy of Reinforced Buckler. Definitely want Zetarati Sentry because it's a nice Vigilant with 
to attack. I'll grab survival. I'll grab two of those. One copy of work. Uh, what do we have here? Anything I'm interested? Yeah, this is another thing I'm interested in. This um, milling. Like, I really like the idea of fatiguing the enemy out. So if we do two of those. Grab two axe blows and some removal. That's not bad. Grant four resistance to any target. It's a bit costly, so we'll see what else we have. Here's another one of those each time it attacks. Um, you remove a card from the opponent's deck. So I've got two of those. Um, this one here. How many survivors do we have? We've got laborer, warrior, survivor. There's one. There's two. Warrior. Three. Four. Okay, we've got four. That's not bad. I'll have a look what else we got. Uh, these two are probably really good. Ointment Maker. Each time you play a unit, grant hit plus one, plus one. Each time you activate supplies, the allied targets. Oh, I like that. Grab two of those. Uh, grab one heroic harangu as a nice combat trick for later in the game. And we'll grab a uh, Illyrian Guardian. How many cards? We've got 26. Oh, interestingly enough, that is also a survivor. So... Yeah. Let's grab that, um... Uh, unknown territories, two copies, we've got room for two more cards. What's in the um, neutral stuff? Journey to the unknown is good. Uh, party at the tavern is also good. Two of those. Can we make room for Journey to the unknown? Let's see. We'll get rid of one of those. Yeah, we'll just go with... Uh... Uh, we'll chuck... Get rid of one of these guys and we'll get one of these Johnny and Unknowns. Oh, we're going to actually fit... Two. Yeah, we'll grab two. Done. Uh, that's the deck. We'll see how it goes. Custom, there we go. Uh, nope, we went versus AI. We're gonna do random and let's do it. Alright, you die, what you got for me? My opening hand is not too bad actually. I'll get rid of this one. Yes, alright, excellent. And I get the uh, amulet. Heck, that's good. Uh, let's go ahead and put that in the core zone. We'll play the Fruit Gatherer first. We'll play the Telerian. No, we won't. Get back in my hand. This thing. Ah, uh, doesn't really matter, does it? Um. Yeah, we'll pass the turn and hope, hope that we can keep our fruit gather. No removal, please. No removal. That's okay. Yes. Yes. Ooh, and another one. Um, okay, let's go ahead and play the Telerian Squire. Uh... Let's play the Fruit Gatherer, another one. Attack that. Did. And heal. Is the amulet. And we'll play another one out and keep the, uh, pump up the other Fruit Gatherer. Then they stand more, more chance of surviving. And then we'll play that into the core zone. Are you but? Are you but? Ah, oh, that's how you want to play it. 
Ooh, that's not bad. Uh, let's go ahead and we'll... That, some extra resistance. Kill that. Attack face. Kill that. Um, uh, yeah, go ahead and heal everything. Do a card. Ooh, chuck that in there. Anything in here that's worth it? No. Not right now. Two resistance to all allies. Yeah, that's... Okay, we'll, we'll see what happens next turn, though. Five more money. Ah. Gonna kill that one. Yep. That's right, I think we've got plenty of supplies here. <laughs> um... Attack face with that one, and then we'll send her to the cause. Play vigilant thing. Attack that thing. That was still far now. Oh, play the other vigilant. Dunzoed. Really? I hate that card. <laughs> uh, I think we can afford to send one of these into the uh, core zone there. Play the ointment maker. Play the reinforced backline immediately trigger it on her to keep her alive for as long as possible. Uh, and then pass the turn. We've got a bit of a visual bug, this supplies is now forced to stay on the screen, which is unfortunate. Yeah, I'm attack there, that's fine. Um yes. Wait, yeah yeah, let's kill this. Play this. Oh nice. Forgot about the the buff. Yeah, that's what we can do. So we'll hit face. Oh I hate that car. Man, this is an aggressive deck. Resistance to everything, yeah. Go ahead and attack on that. Fill it back up. Um, is there any. Uh, hey, there we go. Okay, that'll do. I meant to attack, but I accidentally hit the uh, pass button. I think we probably could have the the UI a bit more stretched out and make the pass turn button a little bit smaller so it doesn't get accidentally hit. Oh, that's why you didn't attack that one, because you had that. But. Definitely get that out. Um... I think we'll chuck this into the core zone we'll give. Uh, gonna have to start whittling down this this one. What are we gonna do with this? Yeah, yeah. Let's give it to him. And that's gonna spawn because that's a survivor. So we'll, we'll check that on him. Past the turn, we do have to be really careful. I'm playing a lot of cards, so I'm getting milled out a bit too quickly. Ow. Oh, 
Okay. Let's try and keep everything in our hand for now. Although having that's pretty good. Let's definitely get this guy out for some protection. We'll take care of this one. And... Do I want to do that? We'll do this one instead. But that uh, resource is good because it allows us to fill our deck a bit more. Dropping two more cards and we'll heal... That one we make a... Uh, um, that's it. Pass the turn. That's fine. got him so we attack actually we do hey hey we win alrighty so there you have it that is Corza voices in the dusk uh, so what do I think of the game well first of all uh, um, just a note on the Bugginess, um, I've actually been pretty surprised despite it being a closed beta, the game hasn't been too buggy. Um, I've suffered some visual glitches and stuff here and there, I think you might have saw, seen one in that previous match. But in terms of mechanical, mechanically, not a lot of bugs, uh, it runs pretty smoothly. Um, what else do I like? I really like uh, the core zone system in this game. I like that it not only serves as a resource system, but also functions as a second hand, allowing for a lot more strategic options, uh, especially in how it impacts um, or affects other areas of the game, like um, being able to send allies into the zone before they die in order to recur them again later means that loss of value from character death feels more weighty if you can sort of send them into the core zone before they die then they can come back full health and you get tons of value from that or even just like how if you're running low on your deck you can sort of just leave your hand full and start uh digging into your cause um cause zone and uh try and find answers there that's really really cool i like i like a lot of the uh, strategic options that the cause zone system brings Something that does concern me about this game though is that uh, there seems to be a, pos a huge or high possibility of um, infinite combo or OTK decks that really sort of seem to come from um, the play, the extra play system. Like, it's, I don't know, it, despite only being able to play two cards per turn, the amount of plus play cards or effects that exist without any kind of restriction on the amount of extra plays that you can gain in a round seems really ripe for abusing uh, with the potentially of easily getting infinite combos going or even some OTK one turn kill um, lists and stuff like that now I mentioned earlier that I did get a chance to play in the PvP mode, casual mode um, I faced off against someone who had a deck that basically OTK'd uh, infinite comboed me by turn four. Um, pretty seemed like pretty consistently too. So I mean, absolute props to the person who discovered and built that deck. But if decks like that become commonplace, uh, especially this early in the game, uh, game's lifespan, or in the meta, that that lack of interactive interactivity that you feel on the uh, receiving end of a one turn kill deck will really turn away a lot of players um, I, I personally hate decks that are like that um, to me it feels like <laughs> if I can be a little bit crude here it feels like digital masturbation um, but yeah I, I, I worry that that'll turn some people away from this game after they initially try it luckily it does seem that the devs have already taken note of decks like that and they may nerf that in the future but Unless they get some balancing in with the play system, I feel like, well, I fear that it may just come back at a later date. Uh, another thing that I hope that this game explores more is the lore and how the lore impacts the gameplay or the feel of the game. 
I'm a big fan of seamlessly blending theme and mechanics, and right now this game doesn't entirely feel like it blends the two in any meaningful way, uh, at least not to me, um, and it seems like even though you have four different uh, colours or, or uh, I call them um, powers, uh, they don't really feel that distinct from each other. They do have their own separate strategies and stuff going on, but it doesn't really feel that uh, different. Um, so I really hope that the developers break away from that a little bit and from the typical card game design and really explore the lore uh, through the cards. Like, create a card game that's set in the world of Corsa, not a not the world of Corsa set just in a card game, if that makes any sense. Apart from that though, uh, I think the game does show a lot of promise and potential and I'm looking forward to seeing how it goes. Um, you know, as I said earlier, the game is still very much a work in progress, being that it's a closed beta, so I'm sure there's a lot of tweaking and refining still to do, but I'm really excited to track its progress, and I might even make another video in the future um, where I revisit this game and see where it's at. Well, I think that's about it for me. I'm done with this one, so... But before I go, uh, if there was anything that caught your interest with this game, and you want to try out Causa Voices from the Dust yourself, Head on over to playcauser.com and sign up there for the beta. Um, you will get a code sent to you through the email. Through email, I sounded like an old person then. Through the email, yeah. um, make sure you check your junk file because uh, I found my code living in there. Um, also, head on over to the Discord channel. Uh, link will be down in the description, and you can go there and you can participate in conversations about the game with other players and the devs themselves. And you know, you can. Pester the devs a little bit, and you and they might they might even send you a code for the beta. Uh, I know I, I I'm not 100% sure, but it seems like from what I can gather, this beta will last a couple of weeks from this from the time this video goes live. Well, I hope you enjoyed having a look at chords of voices from the dusk. Uh, I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.